Once upon a time, a father got really mad at his children, and to punish them, he locked them in a closet. Time passed by, and he decided to run to town for some errands, and he left his children in the closet. When he came back home, he found his house and his barn had caught on fire, and the fire killed his children. Due to this, the father ended up becoming cursed, and he decided to go looking for his kids. Time passed by, unable to find them. He started growing an appetite for them, and now he hunts kids hiding in the closet, waiting for the right moment. El Cucuy, a Mexican legend says that you're gonna get taken away if you misbehave, don't listen to your parents. Bad kids get taken away by el cucuy. Hey guys, welcome to Life with Steph. I am Steph and today we are gonna be going over the cucuy. So for those who don't know, the cucuy is more of the equivalent version of the boogeyman. Um, a lot of Hispanic or Mexican or Latin cultures, the kids are actually brought up with that idea. We're brought up with not that the boogeyman is going to get us, but the cuckoo is going to get us. Pretty much once I started looking into this, I ended up finding that there's way more backstory to this. Um, and it's also known by many different names, such as el coco, el cuco, coca, cuca, cucuy, cucu. And there's another one that's also cucuy, but it's spelled C-U-C-U-I. So just a little slight difference. But they all refer to this same monster, pretty much. So I actually found out that el cucuy, it actually originated in Portugal and Galicia. In Spanish or other languages like Latin languages, when you're talking about el coco, it does refer to, it can refer to like the head or the skull or also the coconut plant. So just a few little references there that might come up later on. And pretty much, so just according to like different countries, different stories it's going to change how this monster is known and also there's a few different things of how it looks so many latin america countries do refer to this as el cuco now in states like let's say like the united states where there's more of a hispanic population there is also another name for it some people do also know it as the coco man that's the first time i've heard it honestly but i guess just you know depending on how you were raised so pretty much parents when like let's say when they're putting their kids to sleep they tell them you know, like you know it's time to go to sleep but listen close your eyes go to sleep or the cuckoo is going to come and get you. And there's actually lullabies or rhymes, little songs that people have come up with to sing to children pretty much, um, warning them uh, that they need to listen to their parents or else. So one of the oldest rhymes known traces back to the 17th century. And it goes like this. So in Spanish, duérmete niño, duérmete ya, que viene el coco y te comerá. And in English, it goes, sleep child, sleep now, else cuckoo comes and will eat you. Then in Portuguese, there's another lullaby. That one I obviously can't read in Portuguese. So I will put it up on the screen and I will read it in English. Leave coca, leave coca, go to the top of the roof, let the child sleep, a quiet sleep. So in Portuguese, it's more like a monster that's at the top of the houses and that's kind of where they keep an eye out versus like a closet. Now in traditional Brazilian culture, their lullaby goes, sleep little baby, that coca comes to get you, daddy went to the farm, mommy went to work. 
I don't know why, but that one just seems a little more sleepy. And so even though the, like I mentioned, um, the Kukui is like the equivalent of the Boogeyman, Brazilians also have a rhyme that's more directed to the Boogeyman and it goes, Boogeyman atop the roof, let my child have a quiet sleep. Growing up, I don't really remember what they said monster is supposed to look like i just know it's something that like you're supposed to be scared of it's gonna come and take you away if you're a bad kid and you're never gonna see your family again so i came to find out that like there's no general idea of what this is supposed to look like some people think it's like a shape-shifting creature some think it's like a shapeless creature some think it's like some scary creature I've seen some references that it's like a big fish. So either way, the general idea of it is that it's supposed to be something that's just extremely scary to look at. The one that I thought was the most interesting personally is Kuka, which comes from Portugal. And they actually describe it as a female humanoid alligator looking thing. I thought that one was pretty cool. I personally wouldn't want to be taken away by a female humanoid alligator looking thing. No thank you. And there is actually a reference that can be traced back to 1274 where they refer to coca. And Libro 3 de Doacoes De, de Alfonso, they refer to a big fish. Like I mentioned earlier, the big fish appears on the shore and it says, and if by chance any whale or sperm whale or mermaid or coca or dolphin or musarana or other large fish that resemble some of these die in Sisembra or Silves or elsewhere. Then there is another mention of this in 1457 in Catalonia. It's also recorded. It is uh, it says it is a zoomorphic figure that looks like a tortoise with a horned spine, dragon claws, and a dragon head. Legend says she had to dine every night on three cats and three children. The legend of the coca can be compared to the one of Peluda or Tarasque. In 1498, there's another mention. According to Pau de Barros, the name of the coconut was given to the fruit by sailors of Vasco de Gama in 1498 because it reminded them of this, of this mythical creature. So it's like... It's not what came first, the chicken or the egg. Was it the coconut or the kukui? I hope that makes somebody laugh. And it goes on to say, this bark from which the poem receives its vegetable nourishment, which is through its stem, has an acute way which wants to resemble a nose placed between two round eyes from where it throws the sprout when it wants to be born. My reason a such figure, it was called by our men, Coco, name imposed by the women on anything they want to put fear to the children. To this name thus remained as no one knows another. Then there was another reference in 1712 by Rafael Bluto, he observed that the coco and the coca were thought to look like skulls. Coco or coca. We make use of these words to frighten children because the inner shell of the coco has on its outside surface three holes giving it the appearance of a skull. References of el coco can also be found in literature from a long time ago to more recent for example miguel de cervantes um in his last chapter he says tuvo todo el mundo en poco fue el espantajo y el coco del mundo en tal 
coyuntura que acreditó, acreditó su ventura morir cuerdo y vivir loco. In English, he had the whole world in little. He was the scarecrow and the cocoa of the world in such a conjuncture that he credited his fortune to die sane and to live insane. There's also a painting from 1799 that was painted by Goya and it's called Que Viene El Coco in which it depicts a cloak figure that appears somewhat menacing. The Coco appears in Adventure Quest World where it's depicted as the humanoid alligator but in witch attire. Even Stephen King has featured a variation of El Cuco in The Outsider from 2018. There's also a show Casa Grandes which there is an episode called Monster Cash which kind of references El Cucuy in a way but still. So that's kind of what I found. Um, I would love to hear like if you guys have any different versions of the story if you've been told that it looks any different so thank you for watching be sure to leave your comments below let me know what else you guys know about el cuckoo or however you know this boogeyman equivalent of a monster leave your comments below be sure to follow my social media it's all linked down below as well and thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video bye